If your feed looks anything like mine lately, it's probably been filled with Austin Reeves. Somehow, a one hour highlight reel on Twitter made it onto my feed and it has over a million views. Very few players are getting this treatment, but where did this come from and how did we get here? The truth is, it just about came out of absolute nowhere. He's from Newark, Arkansas, an extremely small town with a population less than 1,200 people. And as expected, the 6'5 guard absolutely dominated the local competition. As a senior at Cedar Ridge High School, he averaged 33 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists. He even dropped a 73-point triple-double. Now hearing all this, you probably assume he had a ton of D1 offers, at the very least, an opportunity with the local University of Arkansas, but that wasn't the case. He would go unranked in the country, at his position, and even in the state. There was only a few notable offers on the table, like Arkansas State, South Dakota State, and Wichita State, where he ended up going. Now, Austin Reeves' mania was still a few years away. As a freshman, he played just 12 minutes a game and finished the year averaging just 4 points. As a sophomore, we saw his role practically double, but he was only averaging 8 points and 3 rebounds. By no means a big name in college basketball, but he had established himself as a reliable shooter, having shot 51% as a freshman and 43 as a sophomore from 3. This opened the door to transfer to a bigger program, the University of Oklahoma. Now today we've gotten used to this transfer portal and players switching teams like crazy. The rules weren't so generous in 2018 and Reeves actually had to sit out a season. A year that actually seems to be pretty important in the story of Austin Reeves as he packed on 20 pounds of muscle, really transforming his game going into his first season on the court at Oklahoma. In that season, he averaged 15 points, 5 rebounds and 3 assists, but he only shot 38% from the field and 26% from 3. Not quite what you want to see, but he would take another jump as a 5th year senior, going to 18 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists, now shooting 44% from the field. Respectable numbers, but chances are, unless you were catching many Oklahoma games, the only thing you heard from him was his random 41 point outing against TCU, where he ended up hitting the game winning shot. A game I'm actually going to link at the end of this video, as you should probably check it out, it's one of the best college performances in recent history. Now let's take a look at the sentiment surrounding him as a prospect going into that 2021 NBA draft. There was a lot scouts liked. He had solid size, scored almost exclusively as a shot creator, but also had success early in his college career as a spot up shooter, was an amazing playmaker for his position, and he was an average defender at the college level. But there were a few things really holding him back when it came to the draft. While he wasn't a defensive liability, he didn't have the length or athleticism to be confident that was still gonna be the case at the NBA level. If the defense wasn't gonna be there, if a role as a main shot creator wasn't going to be there, the shooting better be. And while we mentioned the early shooting success, he managed just 28% from three in his time at Oklahoma. Then obviously age. As we know, we are in the one and done era. The longer and longer you stay in college, it becomes harder and harder to hear your name called on draft night. This is why we see some of the biggest names in college basketball go in the second round or even sometimes undrafted. And that's exactly what we saw happen to Austin Reeves. 60 picks went by and nothing. Now Austin Reeves claims the Pistons called him about interest in selecting him at 42, but he declined in favor of a two-way contract promise from the Lakers. You can believe that if you want, but following the draft, that promise became true. Almost immediately, things started to play into his favor. A year ago, the Lakers were swarmed with injuries, creating unexpected opportunities for guys like Reeves, and he didn't shy away. That season, he averaged 7 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists, shooting 46% from the field. Nothing crazy, but he was quickly becoming a fan favorite for likely the most vocal fan base in the entire league. Enter this season, where he's been nothing short of impressive. He's averaging 12 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists, shooting 51% from the field and 38% from 3. But it's really this latest stretch that has everyone talking. In the last 14 games, he's now up to 17 a game, including a career-high 35-point outing. You really can't ask for a much better role player. His playmaking allows him to run the second unit, but a shot creation that gave him his NBA opportunity in the first place allows him to step up into a bigger and bigger role based on need. But who are these 60 players that got the chance to hear their name called instead of Austin Reeves? Now, since we've got quite literally an entire draft to go through, we're going quick, buckle up. The number one pick in the draft was Cade Cunningham, someone that appeared to be a bulletproof prospect at the time. He had an up and down rookie season and played just 12 games this year before going down with an injury. The future looks bright, but it definitely feels like the sentiment has cooled. The second overall selection and top shooting guard drafted was Jalen Green. The talent is undeniable, but there has been some real reason for concern. He's putting up 22 a game, but shooting just 41% from the field, concerning when you consider his defense, but I'm hopeful things are really going to start to come together once his team can figure things out as a whole. Evan Mobley's been an elite defender since day one, and that doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. 
Scotty Barnes shocked everyone with his offensive production from day one, given the pre-draft expectations. He took on Rookie of the Year, but this season, the expected jump hasn't quite come yet. The next guard was Jalen Suggs, someone deemed one of the safest prospects in the class, who today looks closer to a bust than a star. Josh Giddy, deemed the raw prospect from Australia, has become one of the better points in the league in just his second season. Right now, he's averaging 16, 8, and 6. I think this was an interesting run in the context of this video. You've got the quote-unquote safe, proven prospect in Suggs, versus the quote-unquote raw project Giddy, just another example of how tough it truly is to predict NBA success. The Warriors went Jonathan Kaminga, a guy 12 months earlier looked like a lock to be a top three selection. Today, his game is super unrefined, but few have completely given up on his upside. He's averaging 10 on really solid efficiency. Franz Wagner, another one of those project guys, has exceeded expectations from day one, and this season is averaging an efficient 19-4-4. and Davion Mitchell would go to the Kings at nine, and he's one of the more interesting comparisons to Reeves in the sense that he also came to this draft really old. Not only that, but he also transferred. He started his career at Auburn, then went to Baylor, where he would lead them to a national title as a senior. This is a guy that averaged just three points as a freshman, came into the 2021 season off the radar for the draft, and when it was all said and done, goes inside the top nine. Now, given what it looked like he could bring off the jump, I completely understood his stock, but it is interesting seeing the times we pick and choose when age matters when it comes to the draft. Today he's in his second season, averaging 6 points and 2 assists. Not incredible, but the on-ball defense hasn't gone away and he's playing a significant role on one of the better seated teams in the league. Grizzlies went Zaire Williams, a key wing defender for them a year ago that's been slowed down this year with injuries. Then it was James Booknight, another shooting guard that had all the talent in the world but just hasn't found any consistency at the NBA level. Right now he's averaging 4 points a game. As we've been talking about in this video, age is a fascinating factor when it comes to the draft. I think another solid example is the Spurs selection Joshua Primo. The youngest player in the draft who looked good at Alabama, the upside was crazy, but it was still a guy putting up just 8 points a game. It's interesting to think about how, let's say, being 20 years old would have affected his placement in this draft. Things were looking solid for him at the NBA level, but he's only played a few games this season due to an off-court situation. Just after the youngest player, we've got Chris Duarte, who despite being just a sophomore, was older than guys like Reeves and Davion Mitchell. He had a really impressive rookie campaign, but it's been a letdown so far this season, going down to 8 points on pretty bad efficiency. A guy I couldn't believe made it to 14 was Moses Moody. He has everything at least I look for in a shooting guard prospect, but right now with Golden State, he's averaging just 4 points. Hope a new home is on the horizon. The lottery's done, we've got to speed things up. Corey Kisper, one of the best shooters in the country as well, been a solid shooter. Alperin Shagun has been a pleasant surprise with the Rockets. He's averaging 15 and 9. Trey Murphy, an incredible find for the Pelicans, a crazy athletic 3 and D wing, putting up 14 a game, a rare scenario where it seems nothing has changed between college and the pros, at least not yet. Trey Mann, tons of shock rating upside, but he's going to struggle to hold on to his role in OKC, barring a jump. Then we go on a massive stretch of small to non existent current roles. Kai Jones, Jalen Johnson, Keon Johnson, athleticism carried the shooting guards draft stock, and today he has a small role with the Blazers. Isaiah Jackson has been a really solid player for Indy. Garuba and Josh Christopher have pretty small roles in Houston. Then we get to another shooting guard that transferred, Quentin Grimes. What a crazy journey he had as a prospect. He was a top ranked recruit, goes to Kansas, seems to have all the intangibles, then drops 21 points, including six threes to open the year, and he did that against Michigan State. The next day, every mock had him as a top five selection in the draft, but by the end of the year, the production fell off a cliff and he decided the best option was to transfer to the University of Houston, a decision that seemed to pay off. By his junior season, he had submitted himself as one of the best shooters in the country, shooting 40% from three on eight attempts a game. Today, he's one of my favorite young two guards, averaging 10 points with New York on great splits. Bones Highland, he was just traded at the deadline, he's averaging 10 points a game and he seems to fit the mold for a future six man of the year candidate. Right after that, we've got one of the most interesting players in the league, Cam Thomas. Funny enough, things were very similar at the time. People didn't know what to make of him. The talent was there. He just averaged 23 points as a freshman at LSU. That's insane, but it wasn't very efficient. Defense wasn't on the table, and a lot of the times, it looked like he was trying to play one on five. Sounds pretty familiar. Today's role has been all over the place with the Neds, but he did manage one of the best stretches from any player all season, dropping 40 points in three consecutive games. His future truly feels unpredictable. Jaden Springer, G League, Dayron Sharp, Bench Roll, Sandy Aldama, promising piece of Memphis's rotation. Isaiah Todd, drafted out of the G League to basically spend the last two years in the G League. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, a solid forward for the Thunder, seems like a key part of their future group. March Madness hero Jason Preston has appeared in just a handful of games. Rokas, impossible last name, is still overseas. Herbert Jones was a shocker out of the second round. He submitted himself as one of the most versatile defenders in the league. The Pelicans walking away with him and Murphy was a masterclass. Small roles for Miles McBride, JT Thor. 
Ayo Desunmu, on top of having one of the coolest names in the league, has been a decent point for the Bulls over the last two years. Nimi Equeta, Jared Butler, Joe Westcamp don't have roles. Isaiah Livers has a decent role with Detroit, where he's averaged six points, shooting 35% from three. Now, this is actually the selection we mentioned earlier that Reeves might have gone to had he not reportedly requested Detroit to not select him. In the world he doesn't do this, I guess the next 18 players wouldn't be a part of the video, but we're too deep to stop now. Greg Brown and Kessler Edwards, small roles. Jawan Begarin hasn't played a game. Delano Banton, tiny role. David Johnson, Sharif Cooper, Marcus Zagrowski, Philip Petrusev, don't play. Brandon Boston has been somewhat promising with the Clippers. Luka Garza fascinates me. He was arguably the best player in college basketball, taking home Naismith Player of the Year, but the physical profile wasn't ideal, and he goes here at 52. Over the last two NBA seasons, he's played in 58 games for an average of just 10 minutes, but he's put up an efficient six points a game. Whenever he's been in the G League, he's been by far the best player on the court. I really just hope he gets a proper shot soon. Charles Bassey was having a decent year with Philly before getting hurt. Sandro, I don't even know where to start with this last name, has a small role. Aaron Wiggins is a super solid piece of the Thunder's rotation with a ton of upside. Scotty Lewis has played seven minutes across two games. Jericho Sims has an up and down bench role for New York. Raekwon Gray hasn't played. Giorgios, again, not gonna try with this last name, doesn't have a role. Well, there it is, the entire list of these 60 players drafted instead of Austin Reeves. If you're still here, I love you. Now it's early, but this draft isn't looking too hot. He legitimately might be one of the better players. Right now, the only guards from this class everyone would rather have long-term are Cade, Giddy, and Jalen Green. A couple other guys might be in the mix, but I'm not sure about that. I mean, if we redrafted right now, there's just not many guys that would go ahead, period. Cade, Green, Mobley, Scotty, Giddy, Franz, Shangun. Likely Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, and Jonathan Kaminga. But it's right here where the debates really start. Grimes or Reeves, Davion Mitchell, Cam Thomas, Corey Kispert, or Reeves? Let's hear it in the comments. I think I'm gonna avoid that one, but I can guarantee you he's gonna be making more money than all of them next season. Now, is this video a completely ridiculous concept? Absolutely. If Austin Reeves wasn't on the Lakers, would this video be on the internet right now? Absolutely not, but he's been fun to watch and the social media response was hilarious, so I just had to. I'll leave you with this corny quote from Reeves after being asked why he wanted to be an NBA player. To tell everybody to F off.